Hello everybody, welcome to part 4 of video series about GD extension. In last video, we learned how we can build our GD extension library. In this video, we are going to start to code in C++. This video has two parts. In the first part, we are going to create a simple class that inherit from Node3D. So when we open Godot, we will be able to see that and put it in the scene tree. And also in the second part, we are going to register that class so Godot can recognize that class. So first we will create our header class test.h. Godot developer recommend to not use pragma binds. Instead use if not defined test.h, then define test.h, and finally in div. This ensures that uh, this header file include only ones. Normally the class you are creating in GD extension inherit one of Godot classes. In this case, we want our class to inherit from a node 3D. So first we should include node 3D, which is inside godot underscore cpp classes node 3D. Then as everything which we want to use is in godot namespace and we want to prevent typing every time godot colon colon, then we start using godot namespace. Make sure to inherit from node 3D with word public, otherwise you will have an stranger. The first thing you should define now is gd class macro, which for the first argument take the name of your class and for the second argument take the name of your class inherit from which in this case is node 3d gd class is a macro which do a lot of internal things which you don't need to know then for this class to get working and not give us any error we should define bind methods which is a static method for now i just give this method an empty body i will explain about this method later very good you have created a class which do nothing but at least it exists next include this class inside test.cpp to make sure our compiler know about that. So now we should register our class. Just go inside go.cpp folder, inside that find test folder, and then go to the src folder and copy register.h and register.cpp to your src folder. As writing all of this is a trivial task, I just copy them. First, let's take a look at register.h. First thing first, here class db has been included. Class db basically a class inside Godot which is responsible to register other Godot classes. As we are going to add a new class to Godot, we are going to use that. Next, we define two functions, one for initialize our module and other for uninitialize our module. These functions have only one input, which define in which initialization level we are. Another important thing is that the name of this function can be anything. So I change the initialize example module to initialize test module but you can name it anything you want. Now for the next step, let's open register.cpp. In this section, we are going to define the body of the function that we have been defined in the header file. First, let's change the name of this function according to what we have done in register header file. Then let's remove all of these things and all of these includes. Now include the header file of your class and inside initialize test module, we are going to register our class with the static method which exists inside class db. Please note you should pass your class as a template argument, which is inside angle bracket, not inside parentheses. If you look at the start of this function, there is an if statement which tells to initialize this class in a level scene. You can change this according to your need. For example, if you need your class to be initialized in the editor, you should change it to module initialize level editor. In other function, which is uninitialized our module, we don't need to define anything for now. So now we should register the function that register our classes. Yes, that sounds strange, but Godot has no idea these functions are going to initialize and uninitialize our module. So in the next part, you can see extern C with open and close bracket. Extern C just makes the function which is defined inside that to C programming language linkage. And this is the function that register the function that register my classes. Don't worry about return type, just remember this function name. You can also change this function name as you like, but you should remember that because later we should give go that this function name as an entry point to our module. So next here we create a init object, which this function should return that, and then change the name of this function to the correct one. And finally set the module initialization level and return init object. Okay, done. Now let's build our shell library with scans. And this is our shell library. And for the blast step, we should import this library properly. Go inside Godot.cpp again, find the folder test, demo, and copy example.gd extension to your project file. Change its name as you like. Open it. First, set the interest symbol. Interest symbol is the function which I told you you should remember the name of that. Next, find your platform and library specification. 
in this case is Linux debug x86.64 and delete other one and then put the pass for the library. Later, we also can define other library in this import file. Now, everything has been set up. Let's run Godot. Let's see if we can find our class. And as you can see, my class is here and I can add it to the scene tree. But right now, it's not doing anything. The next video, we will learn how we can add a method to our class and bind it to use it in GDScript. Have a good time. Until the next video, bye.